Welcome back to the channel. So I get lots of questions about folding pocket knives, knives in general, whether you can carry them in public, what amounts to a good reason. If it is a folding pocket knife, whether you can still carry that or whether there are still some times when that could be an offence and what might amount to an offensive weapon and so on. So I'm going to run through each of these in this video very briefly because they do overlap. There is some overlap between the legislation and how these laws apply and what circumstances you may and may not get into trouble for carrying one of those things. First of all, people also ask my opinion, so I'm not usually giving my opinion on this channel, but I will tell you what I think about knife law in the video linked below, which I'm going to put on Black Belt Secrets, my sister channel, where I do sometimes give my opinion. You don't necessarily have to agree with my opinion, not everyone's going to agree with my opinion. Some people then tell me that they're unsubscribing because they don't like my opinion. Well not everyone's going to agree and certainly not all the time but check that video out in the description below if you want to see what my opinion is on uk knife law and first of all if you're new to me i'm a barrister who helps you understand law so i'd be really grateful if you hit the like button and subscribe and you can also support my channel by joining as a membership for just a few pounds a month which is less than a pound a week and less than the price of a cup of coffee so let's get into the content of the video so it is a general prohibition on carrying a pointed or a bladed article in a public place under section 139 of the criminal justice act 1988 unless it comes within the exemption of a folding pocket knife which must not exceed three inches and the courts have decided must be immediately foldable at all times and not contain any logos or slogans indicating harm or anything like that there are also lots of debates and arguments about whether or not the blade is sharp so to curb that argument straight away it doesn't matter whether the blade is sharp or not if it looks like a blade and seems like a blade then it is a blade whether or not it is sharp the case for this was where a butter knife was held to be a blade for the purposes of this legislation. A butter knife having a relatively dull blade just designed to scrape butter. The next argument is usually what portion of the blade contributes to its length. But this is sort of overlapping with the argument about which bit is sharp or not. So if there are three inches that are sharp and an extra inch that is not sharp, it's a four inch blade. If there are two and a half inches that are sharp, and another two and a half inches that are not sharp, it's a five inch blade. Therefore, it will not come under the exemption of a folding pocket knife because the blade exceeds three inches. There are no arguments about which bit is sharp, which bit isn't sharp and not taken into account for the full length of the blade. Those arguments will fail. People will still argue with me in the comments, even to this video telling me I'm wrong and everything else. But, but if you try it in court, you'll get convicted. That's my suggestion to you, take it or leave it. If it exceeds three inches, it is not a folding pocket knife for the purposes of this legislation under the exemption under section 139. Now, moving on to a scenario where you could have a pocket knife with you, but still fall foul of legislation. That is because this could still be an offensive weapon because anything can be used as an offensive weapon. Weapon. A GoPro could be an expensive weapon. This is not a sponsored video, but GoPro, come on. This could be used as an offensive weapon if I took it out with the sole intention of slamming somebody in the face with it. That would make this an offensive weapon. Likewise, I could take my coffee mug because I've just had my coffee this morning. This could be an offensive weapon if I used it with the purpose of causing harm to somebody because this is just one of the three ways something can become an offensive weapon. The first being something which is designed to cause harm. Think of a truncheon or some kind of other weapon that is designed and produced to cause harm. A gun is obviously the most obvious one because it has one purpose and one purpose alone. The second category of something which can be an offensive weapon is something that's been adapted to cause harm. So let's say we have a metal ruler which is ordinarily just used for mathematics. If that was sharpened to create a blade on the side then not only is it going to be a bladed article but it's going to be an offensive weapon because it's been adapted to cause harm. Just like a glass bottle or even my mug that I referred to earlier. If those things are broken with the intention of creating a sharp edge on the porcelain or on the glass and that has been adapted to cause harm, that then makes it an offensive weapon. The third category, and this is one that many people fall foul of, is something which is carried with the intention of using it to cause harm, as I used with the unsponsored, currently, GoPro that I used in this video. If you are carrying something with the intention of causing harm with it, even if that is within the realms of self-defense, it makes it an offensive weapon. 
this is why a lot of people fall foul of this legislation. This is under Section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act of 1953. This is a broad section of legislation, which means if you are in a public place with an offensive weapon, this is an offence, which coincidentally has the same sort of punishment as carrying a knife, because it's seen as the same kind of category of carrying a weapon which is either designed to, adapted to, or intended to cause harm. The next questions come about with what is or what could be a good reason. Now, a lot of these questions are very innocent. They include, what if I've just bought a set of knives from the shop and you're on the way home from the shop? Well, that's not likely to be a problem, because if you've bought something from the shop and you're on the way home and you are not unnecessarily carrying them around anywhere else then you're likely to be fine however if you've taken one of them out of the packaging and you've put it down the back of your trousers and now you're out at town going out for a drink that's clearly not okay because even though you've just bought it from the shop earlier that day perhaps it's not going to amount to a good reason to still have it on your person whilst you're out for drinks or clubbing that evening a lot of these things, as I often say, should be common sense, they should make common sense, and you should be sensible about it. Whereas if you're just coming home from the shop with the knives that you've just bought, then that's generally going to be okay. Similar discussions come up about work knives, such as Stanley or DeWalt knives, which have a short but extending and lockable blade which are used for cutting things as a tool of the trade. Now this is obviously going to be in your tool bag for the most part, while you're on the way to work, you take it out, you use it, you put it back in the bag hopefully, and then it's in the back of the van or wherever, and then you're on the way home. That alone would be a good reason to have it with you. You're going to or from work. However, if you've still got it in your pocket and you go to the pub afterwards, that's not going to be a good reason to still have it with you. If you genuinely forgot about it and the police question you about it and you are honest about it, the police might be lenient with you if they believe you that you just simply forgot you had it. But if you are found in the middle of an argument or the middle of a fight or you're argumentative with the police and then they find it on you, common sense will tell you they're going to be less lenient with you and you're likely to be charged with the possession of the bladed article in your pocket. It's also very well worth bearing in mind that you stand the burden of proof that it is a good reason. And an explanation is not necessarily in itself a good reason. You could explain why you have it with you, but it's not a good reason. This would come in with the knife in your pocket from work scenario. You can explain why it's still in your pocket, but it doesn't make it a good reason. It might be an explanation, but it's not a good reason. And in any event, you are going to be cross-examined robustly if you end up in court as to what that good reason is. And finally, as a word of warning, although it should go without saying, you cannot be carrying them in schools, in courthouses, police stations, and so on. If you end up going to court, even with a folding pocket knife, and you've forgotten that you've got it with you, be honest and open about it, hand it to security. But of course, I suggest that you would always check whether you have any of these things with you before you set out to such places. And as a final, final word of warning, even if you have a folding pocket knife with you, it should, again, go without saying that you cannot use it to threaten somebody because that will make it an offensive weapon and it will be much more serious because you'll be using a weapon to threaten somebody. Because obviously if you're threatening someone with it, there is either the intention to cause harm or the intention to cause fear of harm, which is the use of a threat with a weapon. Oh, and I almost forgot, don't forget to check the link in the description for the Black Belt Secrets video, what I really think about UK knife law. Check that out and see you next time.